welcome to another Spark AR update video. So version 98 has just landed and with version 98 it's finally brought us the act, uh, ready access to hair segmentation. So before this was a feature that was available to selected users via the beta program uh, but now everyone can play about with it. So we're going to go through uh, sort of the principal setup of hair segmentation, a few little things we can do with it and then we're just going to kind of guide your hand for this so to speak. So the way the hair segmentation works is very similar to the way that person segmentation works where we can separate the person from the background, except it's obviously looking for uh, definable hair features. Now the more full the person's hair is, the more accurate and the better this will do. Myself, it doesn't do a super good job because I've got quite wispy, fine hair. So it doesn't pick up all the details as great as it would if I had like luscious locks. But anyway, um, I'm using a different setup today, so I will be looking between two cameras. So apologies for that. Um, but yeah, I'll go with you through the principal setup. So I'm just going to start off with a new project. And this will take a little moment to load. There we go. I'm also just going to use the inbuilt webcam for this part. So there we go. Okay, so now we're using the inbuilt webcam. So I was using the external one for the intro there. And all I'm going to go is go to camera. And under segmentation, we now have this new option. So as we were before, we only had the option for person segmentation. We now have this new one for hair, which is fantastic. So I'm going to click that. It will say hair segmentation is not supported on Facebook. This is an Instagram only feature. So I'm going to select remove Facebook. And this will now create a texture for our hair segmentation mask. If I select the texture, we've got a few options where we can adjust the mask size and softness. And again, play about with that uh, depending on your needs and how it looks for yourself. Um, it's like I said, hair segmentation, same as person segmentation, won't necessarily work in all cases. So good lighting and a good camera quality will obviously increase the um, kind of trackability of that, the reliability. Uh, also, depending on how the person's hair is styled will also depend on how good this kind of works. Okay, so all I'm going to do is just the most basic thing, which is adding a rectangle to my scene. And I'm just going to make this fill my width and fill my height. Like so. And I'm going to create a new material. And this material now will work the same as materials always have, where we can change the shader type and choose colour, etc. But all I'm going to do is where it says alpha, I'm going to turn it on and select my hair segmentation mask texture. And you should now see this kind of white mess where my hair would be. Now, like I said, my hair doesn't track super well because uh, my hair is quite wispy and doesn't have a lot of definition to it. Uh, also, because I'm using the inbuilt webcam, the lighting and tracking isn't as good as it would be on certain phones, for example. So let me just try it on the uh, other webcam for a second. So as you see here, it's doing a bit better, but still not perfect. Um, but again, depends on kind of the person and as to how good the results will be. You can play about with the sort of the softness, like so, so you can make it more defined or less defined, the same with mask size. Um, I'm just going to leave it as 1.8 for now, because I'm not going to play with that, that, with that too much. So my material selected, I can uh, use this colour to change the colour like so. Um, what I'd also probably do is if I was using it, I'd also probably adjust the blend mode. So I wouldn't probably have it on alpha, I'd probably have something like add. So it keeps the different definition of the hair strokes um, and then just applies the colour over the top of it. You can also adjust the opacity to make it more or less harsh. Um, we've got the standard shader type at the moment, which means it's taking into account the scene's lighting. Um, if I change it to flat, it'll give us a more uniform colour. Um, so if we've got other things on our scene, it wouldn't then create a kind of weird disparity where the uh, light is. So this makes the colour just more linear, for example. Um, you can also try like things like multiply, and then this will give you a kind of darker overlay essentially or multiply that color um, but again keeps the definition and again i'll just recommend playing about these settings until you kind of get the effect that you're after Oop, replace doesn't seem to uh, don't use replace <laughs> subtract to kind of is an inverse essentially so i'm just going to keep this at probably multiply to be honest for with you so now we've got this kind of hair colour change and again my hair isn't perfect so I'm not the best model for this so um, let's see if I can find a character that's a bit more defined like so 
So as you can see, it's kind of tracking my hair. Doing, and again, we can play about the settings. Um, up here within the diffuse options, we can adjust the color. And we've also got a video uh, on the channel that talks about how we can adjust color um, in other effects. So again, I'll put a link to that possibly in the description down below. Um, but also we can also play about with its texture. So for example, if we wanted the user to be able to change a hair color dependent on an image or image sequence uh, or clip on their phone, we could go to add asset select a gallery texture and this will create a gallery texture material well texture essentially that we can now apply to our material with the material selected we could go to the texture and select gallery texture this will create a checkerboard pattern um, if I don't want the green hue to be kind of tinting everything I can just make it back to white um, and that will keep the original color of the image or clip that the user uses and then when the user is on their device they can click on add media select an image from their device and now that image is being used as their hair um, texture essentially. We can also control our texture using our patch editor. So if I just open up the patch editor really quickly and I choose my texture like so and I could do, let's uh, go with the most basic of setups and again this probably wouldn't be um, necessarily what you want. You could do things like an option picker and again we've covered option pickers in another video which again will be in the description down below. Um, the only difference is obviously we would just link this up to the material that is being applied to our hair segmentation. So the only real difference between this and other processes is where in our material we're making sure that the alpha is set to be our hair segmentation texture. That is the only real difference in the process. So let's uh, go with counter and I'm just going to create a image sequence so an animation sequence I'm just going to choose a few random images from my machine so these aren't really anything specific just a few uh, random images there we go and let's uh, hook this up to the material so I'm going to choose my material to now Let's just get rid of that, don't need that. Use the animation sequence. And then on my animation sequence, I'm just going to hook, hook up the current frame to our counter. Say three. So now every time I tap on the screen, it will change between those frames in my image, image sequence. And again, this could be changing via um, screen record action or off a timer and again I'm not going to go through that in this video this is just a kind of feature spotlight really likewise we could use the option picker so if we had our option picker in there we could have different textures assigned to our inputs and then depending on what option is selected at the bottom we can then have that apply to our material texture input so again, there's various setups we can do with this. I'm not going to cover them all in this video. Um, it's just to kind of just to highlight the fact that now version 98 is out, and we now have access to hair segmentation, uh, a feature that has been requested and people have been after for quite a while now, and has thankfully now landed. So your results will vary uh, depending on obviously the end user. This is an Instagram-only feature. And I hopefully uh, will see some amazing things done with this in the coming weeks. So I've been Steve Fisher, remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.